So welcome to Trent University's virtual winter open house. We are excited to uh, welcome you to the Center for Linguistics and Languages session. Um, I'm Kathleen. I will be the moderator of this session. And joining me today, we have Martin Boyne. We also have Xiaoling Wang. And we have our fourth year student, Amy Bridges, all here to chat with you about the programs that uh, sort of live in the, the Center for Linguistics and Language at Trent. Um, we are excited for the path uh, that you have ahead of you and look forward to sharing all of the reasons why Trent has been ranked the number one undergraduate university in Ontario for 11 consecutive years. During the session, you can ask any questions in the chat um, and at the end we'll have some time for that um, as we're a pretty intimate session today. Also, if you just want to put your hand up, we're happy to, to just chat it out with you if you have your questions and are comfortable doing so. Um, this uh, presentation is offered with closed captioning uh, to enable that. Um, you can just select the three dots here at the bottom. And I think I have, yes. Okay, so I've just turned it on so that that way it's it's there for anyone who, uh, who would like to access that. Um, on our events page, you will see a few live chats happening today. Um, you can drop into any of those live chats as you as you see fit, as, uh, as they appeal to you. Um, and I think after this one, we'll only have one final round of, uh, of live sessions as well. So uh, hopefully you've had a chance to check those out during the day. And um, yeah, with that, we will get started. So Martin, take it away. Okay, thanks, Kathleen. I always get very nervous in front of such a large audience, so um, <laughs> for, for, forgive, forgive me. Um, but no, we'll, we'll keep it very formal. This is this is very Trent actually to have um, more people on this this side of the classroom, if you like. Then, um, so so yeah, you have that to look forward to uh, um, when when you come to Trent. So yeah, so my name is Martin. I'm the uh, coordinator of the Trent Center for Language and Linguistics. And um, we, uh, oh, great, good to see you. Yeah, good okay. to see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we look, our center looks after the, uh, all of the languages at Trent, apart from French, which has its own uh, session and is its own department. And so I look after linguistics, that's my area. Um, I um, teach linguistics at all, all the different levels. And so I don't know particularly, maybe I'll ask you first of all, uh, what uh, Emma? What what parts of the, the department or program you were most interested in, and then I won't ramble on with things you're not interested in. Yeah. Um, so I'm coming to Trent for the Bachelor of Arts and Sciences, and I think for the art part, I really want to bring in uh, languages and linguistics in any way that I can. Um, okay. I speak Spanish, so I think uh, learning Spanish at a university level would be super cool. Sure. Um, yeah, those okay. kind of things. Yeah, okay. Well, Spanish is one of the, the many languages that we offer, and all of the languages that we do offer can be learned from the from the very beginning level, which is great. You don't have to have any experience. Clearly, you have some in, in Spanish, but we, we're fortunate we have some upper year classes in, in Spanish as well. Um, we also have introductory and some upper year in, let me try to get all of them, and Shaolin can fill in the gaps, um, American Sign Language, which of course is hugely popular, as is Chinese, which uh, Shaoling can tell you about. We also offer German, which Amy can tell you about because she has taken the German courses. Um, we offer Spanish, of course. We offer a little bit of Russian, um, occasionally some Arabic, occasionally some Italian, uh, mm -hmm. and then all the linguistics courses that uh, you, you can imagine. So covering the basics of linguistics up to some more advanced types of, types of things. So yeah, it's 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 a great um, complement <clears throat> to a to a range of degrees, and clearly the the BAS is it BAS that you you're thinking of, um, you know that's that's a great interdisciplinary program to start with. So bringing in a bit of linguistics, a couple of languages is, is certainly ideal. So um, so it's it's a great it's a great choice. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll just that's the basic introduction to the uh, to the to the program. And I'll let maybe Xiaoling talk a bit about uh, what it's like to teach languages and what we kind of, how we kind of do it here. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. I have uh, been teaching the Chinese language culture here since 2007. And uh, we uh, used to offer um, language 
courses, uh, at least Chinese, I'm just probably, because I've been teaching Chinese, so I just focus on Chinese for now. So uh, we used to teach uh, Chinese languages uh, in the Durham campus as well, um, in person before pandemic. But uh, right now, um, because of the pandemic now, uh, I have developed the uh, online courses. It's called web-based courses, which means that uh, the courses are already put on the uh, Blackboard. Normally, we use the Blackboard, and so you can enroll and then uh, study at your own pace. And both Durham and uh, uh, Peterborough campuses students can take those courses. I'm sure that uh, uh, actually uh, the Spanish um, mm -hmm. have uh, been offered uh, with the online web-based as well. So um, I, I believe right now it's only Chinese and Spanish have. Uh, uh, pure web-based and I'm sure uh, we're gonna uh, develop more and so uh, for the Chinese language uh, and culture courses uh, while in person and uh, we you know just uh, do a lot of uh, group works and um, uh, uh, in-person cl uh, classroom activities and uh, before pandemic we also had annual um, language festivals and uh, which uh, we brought, uh, you know, the uh, st students from and uh, faculty from all um, language sections, as well as even in ESL, English as a second language uh, department. So we had that language festival, so uh, everyone could, um, I, I mean, students could get a chance to meet with the faculty with different languages, and then students could also had a chan chance to exchange the uh, language studying ideas and uh, uh, resources with each other. So it's a very fun. So hopefully right now, since I think everyone, everything is gonna open up and we're gonna resume that. And also uh, we have uh, other uh, extracurricular activities such as uh, film uh, appreciations. Uh, before used to, uh, there was a, a faculty from German section and she used to take care of that part. Uh, the students could get a chance to watch all different kind of international language films. Uh, so that uh, was a, a chance for students to uh, get familiar with other languages. Uh, um, so th those are the uh, extracurricular activities. So uh, over here, you know, you, you really get a very um, broad range of uh, things, <laughs> you know, in terms of language learning and uh, uh, even teaching, you can sometimes even know how we how we teach over here, and maybe for students, prospective students who want to be language uh, instructors in the future, you're actually also be able to get a chance to know how uh, language teaching looks like. Yeah, so this is the. Um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, now, I just wanted to to add in there too that um, even though we don't have currently at least a degree in language and linguistics, we right. do offer the ability to get something called an option in languages or an option in linguistics, which is basically equivalent to a, a minor. You can minor in anything else basically at the university. And while we don't call it a minor, it's the same number of courses. So you're able to get that annotation on your transcript. So uh, in Emma's case, you would get a Bachelor of Arts in Science, and then you could also get the, the option in languages or linguistics as well. So it, it looks, you know, that it shows employers and grad schools and so on that you've, you've got that kind of background. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of, because since uh, Martin mentioned about the, maybe the career or profession in the future, and uh, we also have uh, interpretation and translation uh, in our courses. So uh, after you take our, our language courses, you are able to uh, be as a, a translator or even a, an a interpreter. So that's actually a very good career path. And some students do that. And even, because <laughs> since myself, actually, I uh, during the pandemic, I started the broadcasting. And I uh, sort of train students in my courses to how to be a, a, a like anchors of, of a program. And so that's actually uh, one of the uh, career paths you can take as well. And uh, for Chinese language courses, I even have the Chinese opera appreciation every other week uh, right now on campus. Uh, so uh, students can also get some idea about how the, uh, you know, the art 
uh, Chinese art in that area. Um, so if you're interested in, you know, if you know the language, you can be a Chinese opera singer as well, <laughs> if you want to, if you have a good voice. So yeah, so a lot of options. Just so, you know, I think language is just really the fundamental <laughs> thing of everything. Yeah. Thank you both for for sharing that. Yeah, I was I was going to ask you guys. Yeah, what are some of the things that um, graduates who've who've been through uh, some of the linguistics courses they go on to do? If you if you want to speak to that. Yeah, well, in, in terms of linguistics, particularly, um, pe people have gone into things like ed editing and uh, that that you know publishing work. Uh, having a background in in language is very good for that. Right now, I'm finding many of the students that take my linguistics courses want to go into uh, speech language pathology. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of interest in, in that at the moment. And so by taking certain courses in linguistics, as well as in uh, biology and psychology, they can prepare themselves to go on to a, a grad program in speech language pathology. Um, you also get people looking to go into teaching in general at all different levels. Uh, particularly, I think when they take linguistics, they want to maybe do primary education, but uh, certainly one thing I find looking down the, the majors of the people that are in my courses, they're from all over. So I get people in nursing, I get people in biology, I get people in the humanities, and it's just a real mixed bag of people that, that come into probably both language and, and linguistics courses. So it's, it's great because you get all these different perspectives and people discovering uh, language and linguistics, maybe for the, maybe not the first time, but the first serious time when they're trying to, you know, just carve out a different path or whatever for themselves. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, even it can be language specific as well. So because like in Chinese, Chinese linguistics, we do yeah. need uh, people to especially build up the, maybe the database for, uh, to analyze so it can can be a uh, analysis of the uh, specific Chinese language linguist, linguistics area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so a lot of choices. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and a little earlier, Shelling, you mentioned some of the extracurriculars and sort of fun things that, that students can expect um, right. within the program. I was mm -hmm. wondering if there's any other sort of experiential opportunities um, that you, either of you know of uh, within, the, within the Center for Languages and Linguistics. The experiential, uh, yeah, actually, with the study abroad, you know, can um, uh, I've been wait, I'm working with Martin and uh, our study abroad program, and we're hoping to uh, resume the study abroad uh, in either China or in Taiwan. But right right now, China could be a little bit harder because of the pandemic, and they, they have pretty much you know a lot of restrictions. So actually, Taiwan is a very good choice now. So I've been uh, exploring that uh, route. And hopefully we can corroborate with one of the best, uh, or you know, just top some top universities to um, cooperate with the, their language courses, and even have the. As I mentioned earlier, you can be even trained as a language uh, instructor. So can uh, there are a lot of uh, universities which offer the uh, teachers training program, and we can cooperate with them, and then you can get the certificate, and then you'll be able to to teach. So you get a, really a hands-on, uh, not only for the language itself, but also how to become a, a language instructor as well. Yeah, so these things I've been exploring right now. Yeah, and I'm, I'm responsible for the, the year abroad program in France mm -hmm. as well, even though I don't look after the French courses, that's part of my position right now. And I, I do know that we're also starting to look into a potential um, Latin American studies specialization, which would involve a semester abroad uh, in, a, in a South American country. And I'm aware that uh, our German instructor mm -hmm. that a Amy knows, uh, Megan, um, she is currently working on a summer experience program in, in Germany. So uh, I think everyone's desperate to, to travel again. And we're, we're starting to, you know, look positively about that kind of thing for over the next uh, year or so so mm -hmm. yeah lots of different opportunities and, and even if it's not an organized program as Shaoling mentioned we have a study abroad program at the university and they can help you go wherever you you want to go either mm -hmm. under your own steam or as part of an exchange or something like that so lots of really good opportunities that we encourage because we fully believe that uh, 
to become good in a language. You need that linguistic and cultural immersion, um, whether it be close to home like Quebec or a little bit further afield like China or something like that. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah, thank you for mentioning the study abroad. It's such a great opportunity for those who, who are interested. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully we have more options soon again. Obviously, safe, safe, safety first. But uh, yeah, so um, so I, I have a question for uh, Amy, who's joining us as a, as a current student. Um, what do you love most about your program, and maybe specifically the opportunities you've had uh, to take language courses at Trent? Okay. Um... What I've loved about it so far is it didn't feel like it was work. Like doing the 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 course, it it was very fluid. And because we were doing so many um, group things, when I was having difficulty or someone else was having difficulty, there was somebody else to help fill in the blank. Like it was very um, what's the word? Cooperative. That's what I'm looking for. Is very cooperative. Um, and yes, um, Megan was talking about. Um, the, the abroad program, there's actually someone in my last semester of, of German, and his last two weeks of our course was in Freiburg, Germany, um, during the program. So he showed us outside his window. So we got to actually see Germany while he was there. Um, and I really loved that it wasn't just the language, it was learning about the culture at the same time. So while we were learning about the language, we we're also learning about the culture and what it's like to live there. And um, different traditions and how they're different. So I really enjoyed that part. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, do you have any advice for students who are planning on taking on a new language during their uh, during their degree program? Um, I kept forgetting certain things because I was only talking German on the days that I had class. So my suggestion is start saying specific words that aren't like call a table the language that you're actually learning so that way it sticks in your head or um, my plan so I don't forget it is I am going to teach my partner how to speak German so we can talk together so that way um, it won't be lost so just keep practicing and it'll make um, make the classes seem easier. That's great advice thank you. Um, I quickly oh, yeah, yeah, go. because that actually um, as a, a language instructor you know <laughs> I think the most important thing is that be open to as many languages as possible okay so monolingual is not no longer working <laughs> in this world so you, you really need to be able uh, you, you should be able to really accept and absorb uh, as many languages as possible because one because uh, there's a, I'm sure Martin knows the uh, uh, Noam Chomsky's uh, idea of universal language language universal so if you know one language well and you be able to manage the second language and third language and also the very important thing is that you should know your own mother tongue very well don't think that oh I only speak English you know English is the impedes for learning other languages no if you know your language very well it really actually helps to learn another language that's my advice thank you <laughs> I, I would I would echo all of that just being being open-minded in general because even though I teach linguistics courses rather than language, a lot of the same same kind of stuff applies. It's just mm -hmm. uh, the, the more the less linear you are as a thinker and the more uh, you're able to think, uh, I know it's a cliche, but thinking outside the box uh, mm -hmm. is, is, is good because I find those are the people that um, do, do best in particularly in, in arts type type courses and never being afraid to ask questions either. You know, just general advice and people are very shy sometimes about approaching their instructors because they think oh well I'm, I'm everyone else knows and I'm the only one it's not true um, I, I would say that the people who talk to me the people who do ask questions are the ones who are most successful in in courses because they they ask the right questions and it just unlocks things for them in ways that the others don't benefit from okay. so, definitely yeah. Yeah, and I was gonna say, like, to to add to Amy's point too, like, group work and talking with your with your fellow students as well. That was something in my first couple years of university, I had a really hard time with. You know, if I didn't have a friend already in the in the course, it would be like, oh, I don't know, I don't 
but when you're studying with somebody and you're and you're just talking about ideas i mean definitely with language and linguistics but with everything you know um it, it starts making sense things start clicking in a way that doesn't happen when you're just reading the same thing over and over <laughs> it really helps to engage and definitely with professors um that's something that at at trent i know for sure is is a lot easier to do than you'd think just showing up to office hours um and building those connections uh, I know for me, yeah, it, it made the difference in a course completely because then they know what your interests are and they can help you along the way. And even if it's not for their class, it's for a different class, they might have, you know, a book or a paper they can recommend to, to help you out. And, and yeah, it just, it's a great, it's a great thing to do to start dialogue early with folks um, in the programs that, that you choose. So very good advice, good advice all around. Um, so we do have a, a few more minutes. Um, so if if Emma or Roy, if, if either of you have some questions, you can pop them in the chat or you can just unmute yourself and ask away. Um, we're here to answer. Um, I did have a little bit of a question. Um, so like how would the linguistics option work um, for example, in my Bachelor of Arts and Sciences, like what would my first year courses look like? What would I be learning? Stuff like that. Sure. Um, I'm not sure exactly about the Bachelor of Arts and Science side of things. Maybe Kathleen could fill in some of those gaps in terms of required courses. But in general, I know that our first year is designed to be as flexible as, as possible. So my advice in the in the first year would be to take the first year linguistics courses in both both half both halves, both terms, and then also to pick up maybe um, one language or more than one language in, in each of the, the two terms as well, just depending on how many other program requirements you have. In terms of overall number of courses for the linguistics uh, option, you're looking at five full courses, so it's a quarter of your degree would be in those courses. Uh, and they would be in, I think it's something like 3.5 linguistics courses, and the rest would be in languages or language related disciplines. So that would enable you to take courses in psychology, anthropology, philosophy, anything that had a, a, a language related kind of uh, focal point. So uh, yeah, you can certainly go no, you can't go wrong in your first year, really, in a program like you're, you're talking about. And then you just, you get to know me and we talk about what to, to take the following year. And, you know, who knows, you might uh, decide that that's, that's the direction that your career path takes or, or whatever. And we're also, fingers crossed, looking at maybe having a linguistics and languages degree in a, in a couple of years time. So there could be the potential for that by the time you get here. That's awesome. Thank you, Martin. And yeah, and just to speak to your Bachelor's of Arts and Science. So um, with all of the programs at Trent, I'll, I'll pop a link in the chat in a moment, um, but the academic calendar will become your, your favorite go-to very large document resource. Um, and in the table of contents, you can click on your program. Um, so the Bachelor of Arts and Science is a really unique program because it allows you to have that balance of arts and science in a degree without saying like firmly, I am in the science field or firmly, I am in the arts field. Um, so there are a few requirements Required courses in your first year um, that you will have to take and um, there's there's just two that are um, the code is ASCI uh, which is the the arts and science um, so there's uh, one in the fall one in the winter and then outside of that uh, you're going to have four other spaces to fill with the actual subject areas that interest you most from the arts and science. So you could you could take a linguistics course in there, um, and then you take a few others. You won't need to declare your academic majors until um, your first year, until the end of your first year. So it gives you time to really uh, dive into the areas that you're interested in um, and see what they're all about before you commit to pursuing a degree. And then as you move through your program, so let's say hypothetically uh, you want biology to be one of your majors and uh, and maybe you want to do a joint major in biology and uh, history. <laughs> It would be an interesting pairing, I think. So if you were to do that, you would have in the calendar, it'll tell you how many courses you need to complete in each of your subject areas. Um, with a single major program, it's typically 11, 10, 11, 12 range kind of courses within that specific subject area. And then if you choose, um, if you choose to do like a joint major, it'd be about eight courses in two subject areas. So 
the more formally you pile those things into your degree, uh, the more restricted you are in terms of your course selection, just because you'll have a mandatory courses to select. Um, but if you were to say have a single major uh, and then a minor like linguistics, that gives you a little bit more room with electives. Um, during the summer, uh, if you choose to accept your offer to Trent and come to Trent, uh, you'll be invited to orientation sessions, which are super helpful. And they'll go through kind of all the details of planning your degree. Um, we also have really amazing academic advisors on campus that you can meet with throughout your program uh, to make sure you're, you're checking everything off. Um, but yeah, I will, I will pop the link to the calendar in the chat though, just because I always, I mean, for me, when I started university, that was like the most fun part was looking through the calendar and seeing all of the different courses that were available to me. Like, I think my first year was I had like a Spanish, I had uh, gender studies, politics, sociology, um, and history. And it was, you know, and most of those subjects were things I had never taken before. Uh, but it was, it was fun to kind of play around before deciding on, on a degree program. And so then those, the those orientation sessions over the summer, were they, are they online? Because I'm coming from Alberta. Um, so are they at Trent? Are they online? What do they look like? Do you know? I don't know yet. They haven't updated what their site will look like. What I imagine uh, will happen just from my own experiences in the admissions and recruitment side of things, uh, they'll probably be both. So uh, kind of like with these events moving forward, we're excited to offer in campus, like on campus, uh, you know, open houses and things again, but I don't think we'll get rid of the online though. Uh, just be just because of the the vast number of folks that actually get a chance to interact with us, um, whereas they they wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity for just those on campus events. So I know uh, because of COVID changing uh, health safety measures, we've had them online and we've had things on campus. Uh, so yeah, I imagine there'll be there'll be a selection of both so that you'll be able to attend. Um, but yeah, they'll they'll send you all the links for that fun, exciting stuff as we move a little closer. They typically happen in um, sort of sporadically through June and into August, they'll have them like every couple of weeks. So yeah, and then if you can't, um, you can always reach out to the enrollment advisors. We're sort of the admissions first point. We're happy to meet with folks over the summer to explain those types of things um, or connect you with someone who, who can. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. How about Roy? You think Roy has some questions or no? Any questions, Roy? It's okay if you don't. We're just down to the last minute. So <laughs> if anybody does have questions after the event, you can always email. <laughs> He's good. Just, just absorbing. That's totally fine. Um, so yeah, if you, the discover at trentu.ca, or I think when you go onto the website, if it ever, there's lots of things that pop up and ask if you want to connect, you can always send an email um, to that discover at Trent U. Uh, our, our ambassadors or uh, enrollment advisors will answer that or they'll connect you with someone who who is better to speak to your questions. So anytime you can ask those. Um, thank you to our panel for joining us today and thank you for our guests. Um, it was lovely to chat with you about the program. Um, and uh, yeah, for anyone who uh, does have the opportunity to come to campus, we do have tours happening Monday to Saturday. And uh, we do have the virtual ones now, which is great for those who are a little farther away. Um, you can check those out. They have links up on the main uh, page today. And you can look at those anytime to kind of get, uh, you know, as close as you can <laughs> from, from the comfort of your home. <laughs> so uh, thanks again. This session will be recorded as well as all the other sessions for the day. So if you visit the um, open house page after today, you'll start to see uh, those sessions pop up if you want to view them again or view one that you might have missed. Um, so yeah, thanks again, everyone.